Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. It's time for Mailbag Monday, and we have a good show for you today. Some residents down south are a little bit upset about a power station. And let's talk about our water bill. Will your existing will be sufficient if you move from another state to Florida? Will the new premier homes be cost prohibitive? Hmm. All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. As most of you know, it's been a week since we lost Gizmo, and we miss him dearly, and we know that so many of you do too. I mean, he's been in your homes every Monday and Thursday, coming up on five years. Yeah. And yeah. this past week, we were just overwhelmed yeah we were so many emails so many texts and messages and uh, people reaching out to us and we really appreciate that so much it's been a very lonely week um i miss gizmo terribly i miss his little his little claws clicking on the floor trying to find me around the house because he always wants to be within five feet of me so yeah he's greatly missed and you guys have treated us like family, and that's the way we feel too. So thank you so much. And please, if you'll stay till the end of the show, we'll have a special message for you. Yeah. A reminder that we'd love to answer your questions. Just send them in to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com, and we'll try to get them in one of our shows real soon. Sure. We appreciate that so much. We'd also love to get your video questions. So if you want to film a video question, 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds, and email it to us. We'll try to use it on a show. Uh, we, we try to use them all. Sometimes they're repetitive, and once in a while they come in in uh, por uh, portrait instead of landscape, so right. we can't. But mm -hmm. please send those in, and we would love to not only see you, but to hear your question. Well, can I add something there too, sure. Jerry? I, we're asking you all favors. Uh, sometimes you all send us nice little gifts. You all do not need to ever send us a gift. But if you do, I always send you a thank you note. I write them. I write them all the time. And I have got a, a bundle of them that don't people do. They come back to me because I have the wrong address. And sometimes you all don't give me an address. Please send me your address. <laughs> Anyway, and we've you. tried many times. We, we would love, I mean, some of you are so generous, yeah. and we've wanted to call you because yeah. we were overwhelmed, you yeah. know. Yeah, we will call you. And <laughs> so just include your uh, your phone number if you like. Yeah. If not, no problem. And remember, don't you don't ever need to send us a gift. No, no, and we appreciate all of you. <laughs> all right. Our video viewer question of the week is from Howard this week. Howard's from up in Minnesota. What's your question, Howard? Hi, Jerry and Linda. This is Howard in Rochester, Minnesota. Now, we understand that the Villages is a 55-plus retirement community, but my wife and I were thinking about moving there prior to retirement, and we were wondering how many other people are working pre-retirement adults in the Villages. Are there still clubs and activities that we could participate in after work? Um, basically, is it still fun if you're working? So we're hoping you could clear that up for us. Thank you. Good question, Howard. And I think you'd be amazed if you knew how many of our friends here have jobs. That's true. Especially since COVID and it became such a mm -hmm. work from home yeah. thing. And uh, lots and lots of people yeah. do. Yeah. And there are lots of jobs here in the villages. There are. And we could use a lot of workers, especially in the restaurants. <laughs> well, re in restaurants, but here in the villages, they have ambassadors, you know, people that yeah. monitor the golf courses. Sure. Uh, they have uh, uh, gift shop people. They've got starting shack people. Mm -hmm. uh, there are just lots and lots of jobs here. We have a friend that uh, won the Golden Plunger Award because he cleans bathrooms on the golf courses. <laughs> I don't so, think there's going to be a long line for that one, Jerry. A, bi a big hat <laughs> off to Robin for uh, for the Golden Plunger Award. Yes. <laughs> so there are many, many jobs. If you come here, you can find a job. Anybody that wants to work can find a job. Mm -hmm. That's true. Our next question is from Steve. I've seen the videos, although I thought I could fast track this question. How much is your water bill most months uh, separate from irrigation? Steve, thank you for the question. And we're not, we're going to separate it from irrigation, but we're also going to talk about the irrigation bill because it's all a water bill. And I mean, at the end of the day, that's what comes out of your paycheck. So first, we're going to show you a couple of hours. 
And then we're going to show you someone else's so you can kind of compare. We find the water here to be extremely reasonable compared yes, to yes. Indiana. Mm -hmm. But here on the screen, you'll see a printout of our water bill from a month ago. It was $48.50. Now in that, the first part is the actual water bill. That's the drinking water. Is it, I never can remember, is it potable? Potable? We'll say potable. Potable. $19.80 for the water you were talking about, Steve. The irrigation water was about $29 almost for a total of $48.50 for all the water we used a month ago. Mm. Now this past month, we've gotten the bill and our drinkable water was $15.88. Mm. You know, we found if you hold it down to one bath a week, it really is a reasonable. That's because we got a lot of pools. We just go in the pool. <laughs> Everybody, we got hundreds of pools. Everybody's taking them. And the irrigation water was $21.78 for a total of $37.66. That's us. But we ask another friend that has a house like ours, a designer home. Mm -hmm. And their water bill, you can see it on the screen there. For a month ago, it was $42.66 grand total. And of that drinkable water was seventeen seventy one, so very similar to, uh, to us. And this past month, uh, their grand total was about thirty two dollars, and the drinkable water was sixteen thirty seven. Mm. So there you get it. The water here is not as bad. Now we do have a sewer charge. We didn't have a sewer charge back in Indiana. We had an outhouse. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> we didn't. Sometime, let me tell you an outhouse story, though. I'm nervous about that. Well, you remember from uh, Alaska? No. When we oh. went, we went out in search of grizzly bears. <laughs> yeah. Really did, and we were in a cabin way out in the wilderness. And uh, <laughs> anyway, we got a good story on that. We'll tell you someday. <laughs> Next, we're going down south, where we heard we have no firsthand knowledge of this. We have been down there and seen it, but some residents are upset because a, a power station is behind their homes. And they're afraid it's going to detract from their ability to sell their home or lessen their property values. Peter Bernard is going to give us his take on it. Take it away, Peter. Jerry and Linda, there's a lot of controversy about the substation, the electrical substation that's behind me. We're in Citrus Grove, and you can see that there's some very tall towers that have been placed right behind the houses. Some people believe that their houses are unsellable because of all this, and they're worried that if they ever put it on the market, they're not going to ever recoup what they paid for it. You know, I, I'm with you folks. I mean, I'm always sympathetic. Yeah. When you spend that kind of money, you want your home to be free of any kind of detriments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I think I went down there right as that was being built, and some of those giant poles were already back there. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong about that, but I'm thinking that was there. You know, if you buy your home and they've got a, a substation there, and then that station gets bigger, you know... I don't know. It's it's going to be. I mean, we need the electricity. So, well, the problem is, did this person buy their home sight unseen? Did they not see around the home? Did they buy it by just looking at the pictures on on the Zillow or whatever, or wherever it was? They were seeing their pictures. Uh, that could have been a problem. I don't know, but we are sympathetic to you, and mm -hmm. this is something that I don't think there's a remedy for because we need the electricity, and mm -hmm. the houses are already there. Yeah, this is from Sandy Mortimer. Do purchasers of new homes in the villages get a home inspector to inspect the new homes before signing the contract, or do they just inspect things themselves? Interesting question. That is. I checked on it. Yeah, we didn't do that. Well, we didn't. they're talking about new homes. Oh, yeah. And on a new home, you may build it yourself, in which case, you, you if you live down here, I know you're going out there and looking at it all the mm -hmm. time. and and making those uh, contractors upset and nervous as you're watching <laughs> over their shoulder. Yeah. But when you contract a new home here, you have one year. And in that, at the end of that year, some people do hire a licensed home inspector to come and look through it and help them find things that wouldn't be up to par. Mm -hmm. And the villages will fix them free of charge. Uh, you may have had an experience. You please write in and tell us if it's true. Uh, if you buy a pre-built home, mm -hmm. but still a new home, you may want you may you would probably have the same right to uh, to have it a year, and anything fixed within a year would uh, would be done. And there'd be a longer warranty on some items, I think, like windows and mm -hmm. and doors and things like that. But yeah, you can have it checked, but normally it's it's not done until a year. 
Our next question is from Susan Tate. Susan asked, does everybody always wave when they pass in golf carts? It seems natural. We talked about this before. Yes. Yes, we were going to do a little experiment and see, and uh, we did our experiment in the wintertime. Everybody's sides were down, the windows were up, or whatever, they were closed. So when we did wave, they didn't see us too much. But in the summertime, for sure, in the spring, you will get probably 90% of the people, 95% of the people will, will wave right back to you. Well, you know how it goes when, when you first get here, the first month the first two months yeah. you're waving at anybody and everybody when you drive by people's lanai's you're waving at them in the house you know Hi, you are I'm so here. thrilled you are pumped i'm here and then you're here six months and you're still waving and it's still yeah. fun but then it was for a while you're just trying to get where you're going and people are waving at you and thinking well i thought this was florida's friendliest <laughs> hometown they're not waving at me yeah and listen sometimes you need to keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road yeah you do yeah but yeah, let us know what you think about it. Do people wave at you? We try to wave whenever we are I out. think you become even friendlier as you live here uh, because I, I found that I, when I went home to Indiana one time, I flew home and I was in the airport and I was just talking to everybody and waving. I'm going, oh yeah, I'm not in the villages. Bring it back. But, uh, <laughs> bring it back. Bring, bring it back. Bring it back. Bring, bring it back because uh, I was acting silly, I think. <laughs> okay, this is from Mark S., what type of golf cart do you have? And with your experience, what would you recommend or not recommend? Well, we have a gas golf cart. And other than that, I don't know anything about it. We have two gas golf carts. They're both Yamahas. Yeah, yeah. One of them is called a Quiet Tech. It's a little bit quieter. Not a whole lot, yeah. but a little bit quieter. Mm -hmm. Some people have electric and love them. They're very quiet. Yeah. You know, we, oh, we're yeah. Uh, super quiet. They'd be really nice for a golf cart ride when I'm filming to yeah. not have the engine noise. Mm -hmm. But some people like the engine noise because it gives them the feel that they're out there in the golf cart with us in there. Yeah. But we like Yamaha. We like gas. Uh, the people that have electrics love them too. Electric, you charge. Gas, you put gas in. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot more gas stations than charging stations. Yeah. So that's something to consider. Well, you charge at night, and it may be good on the newer carts. You might be able to go 50 miles or more. Mm -hmm. So you're hardly ever going to go 50 miles in your golf cart in a single day. Yeah. Well, we have two Yamahas, and we love them. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. One thing, though, if you have a pet, you might want to get a bench seat instead of the bucket seats. Yeah. Because when we would ride next to each other, there's a crack in the middle because yeah. we've got bucket seats, and Gizmo did not like that. No. He, a bench seat would have been better for him or a larger dog, you know, if there's two of you. If you're yeah. by yourself, you know. Yeah. yeah. This next question is strictly a matter of opinion. Uh, it concerns the new Premier Homes, and it's from Paul DeCenza. Our question is about the newest Premier neighborhood. We are currently looking at lots and home options in the newest Premier neighborhood and have not decided if the area is worth the much higher bond and lot cost. In your experience, is the extra cost really worth more than living elsewhere in the villages? It's totally a matter of opinion. Yeah, yeah. Those new lots are expensive. Uh, I looked at them. I looked at the cost of some, and there are some in the $60,000 okay. range for lots, which, you know, that's a lot compared to yeah. what they were yeah, here right. in this neighborhood when they were new. But if the view lots, they can go up into over $200,000 and even more mm. uh, if you like those. But again... For some people, if you can afford it, it's worth it to you, then yeah, it's worth it. You know, if you want quiet, you want a peaceful view, you've got the money, it's worth it to you. We'll see if they sell them out. I bet they do. They probably will. I bet I, they do. I, I, I was going to say I guarantee, but I think they will. <laughs> this is from Donna and Alan in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yay, yay, raw. I thought of another question. Do you ever leave your sliding doors open to your lanai? If so, how do you keep the geckos from getting into your house? Or how do you keep the geckos from getting into your lanai? Well, we never keep the doors open to outside. If we do open the doors, we have screens that will come in from our lanai doors, the outside. So we never really leave them open. I'll tell you what, though. The way our lanai is designed... When you close those screens, there is still a gap from top to bottom like this yep. open. Yep. And the lizards will get in. Yeah. 
Now, you call them geckos, and there are geckos here, and she's got one running here somewhere, don't you? It's in the laundry room now. Oh, it's, under got one the in the laundry room. it's under the washer. They don't hurt anything at all. They're really cute. <laughs> but most of the critters that get in are going to be those anole lizards. They're, yeah. they're really cool. They used to call them chameleons when we were kids. Did you ever have one of those? <laughs> you put it on a green leaf, it turns green. You put it on a brown stick, it turns brown. <laughs> they're really neat. That's what gets in our home most often. Yeah. Yeah, he, he left the door open one day in the back, about that far, and we got a lizard. Yeah, or a, a lizard? <laughs> Two. <laughs> How about during the hurricane when I brought the gas grill in? That was a problem. <laughs> it was a big problem. I think I honestly think we had two dozen lizards running free, oh. and we were running around here. If I can find that video, I'll put it on. We were actually chasing them, diving on the floor, trying to put Tupperware over them and everything else. It was, it was mad. Our next question concerns mini golf. It's from Nancy L. I love you three and your work. Does TV have mini golfing? We'll do that first. Yes, we have mini miniature golf. It's, it's like miniature golf on steroids. It's much better than regular miniature golf. You're not going to have a windmill and a lot of places where the ball goes in a hole and under and pops out somewhere else. Yeah. And, and, you know, lots of you don't have dragons and dinosaurs. <laughs> But you have real grass greens, and they're long, and they're they're a real challenge. Yeah, they are. The Clifton Cove is one. The Finney Putt and Play is another. And uh, if you come, they will have balls for you there and a scorecard, and it's free. You bring your putter. You can bring your putter, and a, yeah. if it's open, they'll, they'll loan you one. Yeah. Yeah. But it's fun. It's really deluxe. And yeah, in the second part of your question, whenever I've gone to Disney World, I've had terrible allergies to the point of asthma attacks in the ER. Ooh. Ooh. I've been better since I've been here. She's up and down. Yeah, I'm up and down. Yeah, and it, <clears throat> it's starting. <laughs> this is going to be October, November, and that's when it starts for me. Back home, and we had a lot of leaves, and it was really bad uh, for him. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, when we're raking the leaves, we were a mess for about a month. <laughs> so, I would go fishing, and, and uh, yeah. my eyes would water so bad back in Indiana, and they mm -hmm. would swell shut almost. <laughs> It was pretty bad. <laughs> duh, 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 duh. Stupid, stupid. My head's only this big. Look at your head, it's like this big. I'm not saying anything about it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> we give them what they want. <laughs> they plan on moving here as soon as they sell their. I'm glad people like bloopers. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Two villagers, and I met them at Barbin, Barbins, Barbin, Bourbon, maybe. Bourbon. Let's talk about our weather. And will the new, pa oh. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about our weather. What were you saying? Clacker. <laughs> It's a power bill. <laughs> and core. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got allergy. Take five. And will the new pow new power? I got new power on my mind. There ain't no <clears throat> power. It's only over one. <laughs> Fix our air. This is from Chris and Sherry. Can we do uh, can we do our own yard work? Absolutely, you can do your own yard work, but why would you want to? <laughs> you know, I would say uh, with uh, our friends, half of them do their own. Yeah, yeah. And half of them hire it out. We hire it out. Yeah. I mean, we've got a tiny yard, but we don't want to store the mower. We don't want to store the gas, the weed eater, the edger, yeah. Yeah. the blower. We leave that up and, yeah. you know, we pay 60 bucks a month for it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good, but that's year round. And during the winter, they might only cut once a month. But during the summer, they cut every week, every mm -hmm. single week. Mm -hmm. Now, if, it's, if you like to, you said, can we do our own yard work? Yes, you can. And you could do ours too. I mean, if you really <laughs> like it, you could come over and we'll do some. Give you our address. You could do some weeding if you want, and you can do some edging and pulling and mushrooms. If you have a power washer, bring it over. We'll, 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 you know, we'll have a power uh, power washer. And party. there's another job for you. Somebody's looking for a job. <laughs> there you are. Be a power washer. We have a new feature for you this week. This has been in the makings for a long time, 
and I think it's important, and I think you're really going to enjoy it, because when you come here from another state, you probably, if you're retiree age, you probably already have a will or a trust or some kind of, uh, you know, legal plan set up, and you wonder, are they going to work when they get here? Well, we had that same question years, several years ago, and we did some research, and we found what we feel is the best person in the area to do that work, and she helped us do all our planning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's really good. And she's going to do a column here. And when you have questions of that nature about your estate, about planning, uh, anything that you want to ask an attorney about coming here and retiring here, send your questions into us. We will forward them to her. And here she is with today's question, Amy Pittman. Legal questions? Ask Amy. It's Amy Pittman with Pittman Law Office. Thanks for having me today on your show. Um, I have a lot of clients that ask the question, is my will valid in Florida? So most of these clients that are moving to this community or our surrounding areas are coming from other states and they have already done a will. So we have what we call a self-proving affidavit that is required in our wills in Florida. So if your will has a self-proving affidavit, it is valid. It may not be current to your situation, but it's a valid will. You can't always tell if it has a self-proving affidavit. Some law firms, their formatting will say it actually on the last page. Sometimes it's a separate document um, or it's just the language inside of the document. So we, we definitely recommend that you see an attorney licensed in Florida to review your will as well as your other estate planning documents because a lot of times moving to a different state changes the dynamics of who's in charge and how your estates are going to go. But also having a conversation with an attorney on what exactly a will does. Um, It's always a good idea anytime you move to a different state to review your estate plan. You know, your power of attorneys and healthcare service are going to look different in every state. So that's a question we get all the time. Definitely have an attorney review your will to make sure it's valid in Florida and that it's current to your situation today. Hope that answers your question. Um, We'll get back with you soon if you have any other questions. Have a good day. Thank you, Amy. We feel like she's a real jewel and her office is not technically inside the villages, but it's right on the edge up at the corner of 466 and uh, 301. 301. 301. It's in a little area called Oxford. Mm-hmm. So uh, she can help you. And we will put her contact information in the video description. Mm-hmm. And uh, we don't think you'll be disappointed with it. It's time for Out and About. Yes, ma'am. We went to Reveille. That was a very nice experience. It's a brunch, breakfast brunch place, and it's down, we call it down south, south of 44. It's in the Magnolia Plaza, and we met a couple there, and we enjoyed a brunch. It was delicious. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. She's more of a breakfast person I than I am. I love breakfast. That's my least favorite meal of the day. Yeah. But she does make mean waffles, and pancakes, and bacon, and eggs, sausage. Eggs, sausage, and, biscuit oh, sandwich, yeah. yes, I did. So it was very good. We went down there with some friends. Yeah. So we all ordered there, and I had what's called the 0800. That was two eggs, bacon, tater tots, and toast yeah. with blackberry jelly. Yeah. And to drink, I had a sweet tea. Yeah, I did. I did that because their orange, uh, orange juice is four bucks for a little glass, uh, four something. And I just thought, you know, you know, I don't understand why Florida orange juice is so expensive. A gallon it. in the store is like seven bucks. That that was my big misconception of Florida. I'd come down to Florida and I'd have all the orange juice I could get and all the oranges, but you know what? I, we don't. <laughs> well, you had a sunrise quesadilla. Yeah, what was I that? Did. It was like a western quesadilla. It might have had mushrooms in it. And had some green and stuff there. What was that? A guacamole and sour cream. It was very good. I really liked it. Paul had corned beef hash. You know, on the picture there, it looks like a big patty of something. Yeah. And he had uh, eggs and biscuit and grits. Yeah. And Roxy had eggs Benedict. Mm-hmm. And some grits. And some grits. Yeah. So it was good. And our total bill for the two of us was twenty-two sixty-four plus tip. And I thought that was pretty reasonable. Yeah. 
It's so it's down place. there. It's popular. You just yep. walk in and uh, have your brunch. Have your brunch. Do you have any upcoming entertainment? We do. There's always something entertaining going on in the villages. Well, this coming up week at the Savannah Center and on October 4th, which is Wednesday, is Queen, Rhapsody and uh, Rhythm and Rhapsody. Then on Thursday, October 5th, is Lights Out. That's the Jersey uh, Beach Boys. And on October 6th, on Friday, is The Haunted Illusions. That's starring David uh, Caserta. That would be a fun one to go to. Mm -hmm. And then on the 7th, which is Saturday, is called Barracuda. That's America's Heart Tribute. So these are all going to be great shows. And then at the Sharon, Clint Black is coming, people, on October 6th. You don't have That's, to be so excited I'm about excited it. I'm excited about that one. <laughs> anyway, good shows coming up, everybody. And also, I'd like to kind of give a shout out. There's uh, We have a lot of artists, too. Entertainment and art, I think it goes together. And we have some fabulous artists that are going to give a show their, um, their, their pieces at the uh, Eisenhower Rec Center on October 7th from 5 to 9. And please go to that. I think you're going to really enjoy it. There's going to be 60 plus original works for sale. And then also there's going to be a little bit of speaker series. And there's going to be raffles. And some of the art, uh, there's so many demonstrations going on. And you're going to enjoy that show. That's Are you going? Cool. I'd like to go. I'd really like to go to that. It's October 7th. That's going to be a... A good one. Hey, congratulations to everybody that did the word scramble last week. Of course, the answer to that one was Cape Canaveral. Yeah. And uh, thank you for hanging in there and getting that right. Hope you had fun with it. This week's is a little different. I made it harder for you. You guys were telling me, too easy, <laughs> too it's too easy. easy. Well, let's see if this one's too easy. There uh -oh. it is on your screen. And the clue, I'm not even going to say it. You can see it right there. And you figure that one out, let us know you know it without telling us the exact name. And uh, we'll find out who the Mensa people are out there. <laughs> I can remember the Mensa Club. Jay Ryback sent me this picture because he realized that that one night the power went off for 15 minutes. I was trapped in my recliner. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> a Jay is a character. Time for sweet and salty i'll do the salty first today all right go and for we'll it. close with the sweet we've had all that right. suggestion by the way all right so if you suggested that thank you very much mm -hmm. this is from harold harold wrote me a salty comment <laughs> and he felt so good about his comment that about 10 minutes later he wrote me a second salty comment he was on fire <laughs> and 10 minutes after that he wrote a third he just couldn't get enough of the salty Ooh. comments so Harold says, I'd rather be homeless, I assume, than living in the villages. Mm. Then a few minutes later, he wrote, that's insane. <laughs> and finally, he said, I wouldn't live there if I was a trillionaire. Really? Yeah. Aw. Harold. Well, all right. That's depressing that we can't be neighbors with you. <laughs> now for the sweet, and the sweet's coming from JSA. I love your channel. I walk around the house with, ask us your questions. We've got your answers in my head. I can't sing. So catchy. Love your channel. I am 31. I envy that life. Well, how sweet is that? Somebody that's 31 years old that's singing our, singing our song. We love it when we get letters from young people that say, yes. I don't even know why I'm watching you, but I like it. <laughs> But that's so good. That's yeah, good. they they've got their head on straight, and they know that someday they want to uh, retire they've been, and they've been raised right. Live the good life. Yeah. <laughs> Time for shout outs. At this time, we'll recognize friends of our channel. Listen, if I could put four thousand names up there, we would because this past week, like we said, your outpouring of love and affection was just. Uh, really moving and so you know you consider yourself up there and uh thank you so much mm -hmm. this here i am with another linda and she's from indiana too she brought us a couple of big fat indiana tomatoes what a treat we had some delicious blts didn't we yes Jerry? we did and i would eat those for breakfast i'd <laughs> yeah. eat them anytime that's right 
night. I did a morning, noon, or night. That's this right. BLTs. You know, that could be breakfast. BLT. Al and Kathy came here for a lifestyle visit in August, and they just recently got back from Nigeria where they went to their son's wedding. Wow. Look at those costumes. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. You might remember they sent us an email a while back that it was a video question where they talked about raising bees out in Utah. Mm. And not only that, they sent us a jar of honey. Yeah, we did. It's back yeah, it's there. Back it's there. Right there, right there. Patty and Bob are new villagers. I met them at Bargains and Blessings. They were buying Christmas tree to decorate for the holidays. So nice to see you both. This is Donna, Alan, and Minnie. They're just here for a lifestyle visit and say they can't wait to return. Unfortunately, they have to work for a couple more years. Mm. <laughs> but they're very nice folks. Thanks for sending that in. Jim and Debbie Allen sent in this picture of their grandsons, Tyler and Austin. And that's their cousin in the middle, and they are students at Ohio State. Uh, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. They've been coming to the villages with the, for their see their grandparents since 2005. They're 19. They've been coming here for 18 years. Oh, my They've goodness. They've got more experience here than we do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> hey, these fun-loving ladies are members of the Southern Villages Fun, fun Girls. Girls. <laughs> we did a show with them a few weeks back. That's a great group, and they do a lot of fun activities. They sure do. And these gals are really something. And they wanted their leader, Kelly, to know that she wasn't the only one that knows the newcomers. <laughs> Here's a couple that I also met at Bargains and Blessings. It's Mike and Denise Kruger. And they were on their lifestyle visit. And they were from uh, Seattle, Washington. And they plan on moving here soon, as soon as they sell their home back in Washington. Good luck to you for that. <laughs> yes. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of... Be sure to tune in on Thursday. We're going to have a live show at 12 o'clock noon, and we'll take your questions and comments and just chat with you for an 45 minutes or an hour, whatever. That's a couple right. hours, yeah. maybe two, three hours. No, no, huh? no, no, no. That's their lunchtime, Jerry. <laughs> uh, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel. Until next time. Hi, everybody. I thought I would come back to you one last time just to tell you how much I love you. And I've looked down and seen all those wonderful comments, and it made me feel so good. And it made Mom and Dad feel good, too. You're wonderful people. I'm going to miss you, but don't worry. I'll see you when you get here. <laughs>